everyone and welcome to part one of CSS level two. In this lecture we're going to be learning about font properties of CSS such as size, weight, text alignment, etc. And then we're also going to learn how to download and change fonts. When dealing with fonts we have to keep in mind that not every OS has every font and if you've used both a Windows computer and a Mac computer or a Linux computer often you'll notice that when you're actually trying to use a file that was created on Windows on a Mac or vice versa, sometimes the fonts have to change. And what we're going to be doing is exploring that relationship because sometimes we may need to actually provide the font for our website because the default font isn't available on a certain OS. Because of this, we're going to be exploring a few links. Uh, the first set of link is about OS support for certain fonts, so that's operating system support. So what fonts does Windows support? What fonts do Mac support, etc. And then the second set of links is actually going to cover how to download fonts. We'll be exploring two websites, a Google font site and another site to show you how you can download your own fonts from the internet or connect them using what's known as a CDN. Let's go ahead and start off just by showing some basic font properties with CSS in the editor and then we'll hop over to the browser and check out how we can actually download fonts and check OS support for certain fonts. I'm going to hop to the editor now. Okay, so here I am at my editor, and I have two files open, a part1fonts.css file and a part1fonts.html file. And if you're looking for the completed version of these files, you can always check them out under the CSS Level 2 folder. Right now I have them blank, and we'll be coding through for this lecture. Let me collapse that directory, and you'll notice I also have my browser open, and it's linked to my HTML file. What I first want to do is make some basic HTML. Hopefully by now you can actually do this quite quickly using Adam's built-in help. What I will do is add in a heading 1 here, h1, and we'll say this is something like heading 1, and then I'm going to add two paragraphs to this. First paragraph is just going to be lorem ipsum, remember that's that essentially filler Latin text, and luckily I can just begin to type lo, hit enter, and it automatically fills that in for me, and I will add in one more paragraph but this paragraph is going to have an ID, so I can individually target it in the CSS file. We'll say ID is equal to 2, and then lorem ipsum. We'll save that, and let's refresh over here to make sure that's working. Great, we have heading 1, lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum, and then what I want to make sure I do is link my CSS file to my HTML file. And remember, that always happens in the head, so I will say link, and I can begin to type in link, hit enter here. The relationship is a style sheet, and the h reference is going to be whatever I call that style sheet. So in my case, it's called part one underscore fonts. And as I mentioned previously in another lecture, it's a little unusual to have this sort of naming convention, especially if a digit inside the CSS file, but this is just so it matches up with the lecture notes. Okay, so everything looks good here. Let's explore some of the basics of fonts with CSS. So let's imagine that I actually want to change the fonts. Right now, it looks like it's in Times New Roman, that's essentially the default. If I want to change it to another font, maybe something like Arial, I can start typing font family. And that's going to allow me to then pass in a property of a different font. So we can see that there are some defaults here. These are very basic, so let's show you one of the defaults there if I just say cursive. Save this, and then refresh over here. I can see now I have some default cursive. It looks uh, pretty ugly, but I can also pass in as a string, and that means that I'm wrapping it in either double quotes or single quotes, a font name that I'm familiar with. Maybe you've worked with a text editor before. Hopefully you're familiar with some font called Arial. So let me save that, refresh over here, and I can see now it's in Arial versus Times New Roman. All right, so that's the basics of a font family. But something we're going to have to keep in mind is not every font family is going to be defaulted on every OS. So certain fonts are really common between both OSs, such as Arial. It's in like 99% of Macs and 99% of Windows. But other font families, such as Helvetica, uh, is really only existent on Macs, and maybe like less than 10% of Windows computers have that font. And we'll be discussing some websites that can help you choose fonts that will be available on both OS's, and later on we'll show you how to just download your own font so you can provide the font file yourself. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about font family. So as I mentioned, there are those basically default styles. So if I want something like monospace, I can do that as well for that paragraph. So let me refresh this here, 
And now I can see this is all done in monospace. Let's say I want to change the actual font size. Well, I can change the font size for everything in the body. And the way I do that is just say font dash size. And here I can pass in pixels. So for instance, I can say I want it to be 10 pixels in size. Refresh over here and I can see now it's in 10 pixels in size, 100 pixels in size, make it much larger. Now it's humongous. Okay, let's change it back to 10 pixels. Actually, let's do 20 pixels. And something to remember is I'm zoomed in here in my browser, so it may not look as large to you, so keep that in mind. Now, something you're probably wondering at this point in time is, well, what if I don't know the pixels I want for the font size? What if I actually want stuff to have a relationship between each other? So maybe I want the second paragraph to be twice as large as the basic font size on the page. How do we actually define that? And using pixels, as I've shown here, is actually not very common. What's more common is to use what are known as EM values. And EM values is a dynamic way of sizing things. So when you define the font size property, an EM is equal to the size of the font that applies to the parent of the element in question. And that basically means that if you haven't set the font size anywhere on the page, so let's say I delete this, and I haven't set the font size anywhere, so we can refresh here, that's the basic font size, then the browser default is often 16 pixels. So by default then, one EM, which would look like this, one EM, would be equal to 16 pixels. This is the default right here. Which means, if I tell another tag to be 2EM, then it will be equal to 32 pixels, double that. And then you can get a relationship or a ratio for various tags in your HTML. What you'll usually do, however, is set a font size in the body element. So if we go back here, let's comment these out. Usually what you will end up doing is for the body element, you will select a font size and you will have it be some sort of default font size that you choose. You can do the 16 pixels, which is the same as, as the browser default where nothing's defined but let's say font size is 20 pixels. And then from there on, for the other elements that you want to assign, you'll use EM, which is going to allow you to do a ratio of this, which is basically a ratio of the desired element pixel value divided by that parent element, which in this case is the body. So let's see just a quick example of this. I'm going to grab the number two. Remember that was the second paragraph, that's the ID and state its font size is equal to 2.0 EM. Let's save that. We'll refresh over here. And now I can see that we have heading one, the first paragraph, and now the second paragraph is twice as large in font size as the first one. So what you're doing here is you're stating some default body font size. And then from there, you can actually call the ID font size as a ratio of it. What you should avoid doing is trying to actually call something like h1 and make it mimic the font size of a paragraph or vice versa. Try to make a paragraph as large and as bold enough so that it looks like an h1, a heading one. That's really not the point of this. The point of this is that on your page, if you have two elements of the same type, but you want one to be a little larger, a little smaller than the other one, then you start calling em. What you don't want to do is call em to the point where you should have just called heading one or heading two since the very beginning. So keep that in mind. And then what I want to show you now is font styles and font weights, as well as text alignment. So if I call a paragraph here and say font style of paragraph, and let me change this font size again to 1.0, that way everything's the same. Okay, looks good. I'll say font style here is italic. So I can save this, and now when I refresh my page, I can see that everything is italicized. So you can call font styles for basic things in that manner. And you can also call things such as font weight, and that can be things such as bold, lighter, normal, 100, 200, etc. Not every font is going to have every possible font weight. It really depends on what font you download and what font you use, and we'll be talking about that in a future lecture. But we have font weight is bold, so let's save that and make this both italic and bold. And here I can see when I refresh, now they're in bold. Great. 
And finally, I want to talk about text properties. So if we see H1, one of the properties you're going to be using all, of, all the time is the text alignment property. And you can begin to write text, dash, and you'll see Adam trying to help you out with various text properties. We've already actually seen text decoration. Remember that was stuff like underline, overline, line through. What we want to do is talk about text align. And text align basically allows you to center something, justify it to the left, to the right, etc. So if I want to center heading one, I just say text align center on that heading element. So I will save that, refresh my page over here, and I can see now heading one is aligned to be center. Great. Okay, we're going to be talking a lot more about alignments and how alignments work with mobile devices when we talk about Bootstrap. But for right now, what I want you to get out of this lecture is the following. That you can call font families, have some awareness of that some fonts don't work on every OS. And we'll be talking about that in the very next lecture as a continuation of the series. Then you can call font families for very basic things such as monospace or some of the other options if we take a look. Or things such as cursive or serif or sans serif. We can save that as well. Then for font size, what I want you to make sure you get out of this lecture is that you can call a pixel, but what you should probably do is call an EM based off the default for the body. Then you can call font styles and font weights as well as do text alignment. All right, thanks everyone. And in the next lecture, we're going to be continuing this part one discussion of fonts and talking about what fonts work with which OS, how you can figure that out, and how you can download your own font from the internet to use it for your website. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture. Hello everyone, and welcome back, where we're going to continue our discussion from last time of part one, talking about fonts. In the last lecture, we showed some basic CSS properties for fonts. Now we're going to explore how to understand OS choice and font relationship. We will also show how to use custom web fonts. Let's get started by jumping to our browser and checking out a few links. All of these links are provided as comments in the part one fonts HTML and CSS files that come with the download for this course. I'm going to hop to the browser now. Okay, so the first two links I want you to check out are the official Wikipedia links for the list of typefaces included with Microsoft Windows and on the second link here with Mac OS. And here you can just scroll down and see the latest fonts added for Mac OS. And if you scroll further down, you can see the family name subtype faces available. So as I mentioned in the previous lecture, not every font is going to have every face or style available. Not every font can be shown as italic or bold. And here you can check out the Wikipedia links for more information on the faces available, that's that bold versus italic, etc., and the type faces available. Now if you're choosing a font and you want to know its availability on both platforms, you can check out this website called cssfontstack.com and it has a really nice display of a font and then the percent of availability on Windows computers and Mac computers. So if we zoom in here for a second, we can see something like Arial is a font that is available on 99% of Windows and 98% of Mac computers. So it's a pretty safe choice for pretty much most operating systems that are using Windows or Mac. And that goes for Ubuntu as well. So there are other choices that may not be as safe. For instance, something like Optima, is really only available on Mac computers at 94% and available only about 3% of Windows computers. So if you're trying to choose a default font, try to choose something that has high availability on both Mac and Windows. But let's say you're wanting to choose your own font. Well, you can actually download fonts from the internet and you can either download the font file itself and link it to your project locally, which is what you'll do when you host everything but you can also just link to an actual CDN or a link itself. So let me go ahead and explore how we can do that. There's two websites we're going to be exploring. One is fonts.google.com, which is a really great website to download fonts from. And the other one is fontlibrary.org, which kind of has a little bit of a goofier fonts, but it does have some pretty nice fonts as well. Let's explore how we can actually grab one of these fonts and put it into our website. So if you come to fonts.google.com, you're basically looking at a directory of a lot of font families. And you can clarify what kind of fonts you're looking for, maybe something like handwriting, monospace, trending, and maybe you're looking for a specific language, etc. 
number of styles, thickness. So let's look at one that's really obviously uh, not a font that comes on your computer. So this one right here, uh, Barrio, let's click on that. I'll click on the plus sign to add it. And here we see the family selected. So now if I click on that, I see this right here. And you'll notice that it says embed font. So to embed your selected fonts on a web page, copy this code into the head of your HTML document. And then it tells you what to specify in CSS. So you use the following CSS rules to specify these families, uh, Barrio, and then you can also say cursive. So let me show you how we can do that. And you'll also notice that it has a load time of fast. So loading this using these links is going to take a little bit of time because your website's going to have to connect to Google. But you can also download the font itself but let's try just with the embedding. So I will copy this link and jump to my text editor. And here I have the text editor open and in the head of the HTML file, this is part one of fonts from last time. I am going to save this right here. And it's just a reference to, if I zoom out a little bit, to the actual link to fonts.googleapis. So right here, I've added a link and now I can come over here and let's say we want the paragraphs to actually have the font that we just downloaded. So let me delete some of the stuff from last time. In fact, we'll delete most of it, except for the paragraph. And we'll take care of font family. And we're going to copy and paste what is here, this font family line. So I will copy that and then come back to the Atom text editor and paste that right there. So let me save that. Here I have part one fonts. We can copy that full path by just coming here to the directory, copy full path, and now let's paste it into our browser. And here we can see that I have this sort of funky font from that Google API. So it's really easy to add in new fonts using googlefonts.api. And if you wanted to, you could also download the font and link to the file locally. And we'll be talking a lot more about linking stuff locally versus linking stuff online when we talk about Bootstrap. But the main idea I want you to get out of this lecture is that you can come to Google Fonts, pick any font that looks good to you, add it to what is essentially almost like a shopping cart, and then check this out, and it will actually begin to add. So here, if I wanted to use two uh, different types of families of fonts, you can see here that Google has automatically already added them to the link. So then I can get rid of Barrio, the first one, and then only have this Playfair display font. And it tells you what to specify in the CSS to actually specify those families. The other website I wanted to show you about fonts is not Google Fonts, but this fontlibrary.org, which is also another website that hosts open source fonts. And a key thing to remember is that some fonts can actually be really expensive and are not free. So not all fonts are free. You're going to have to make sure that you check the copyright and whether or not you have permission to use a font. On Google Fonts, all these fonts are free and open source, so you can check them out. Same with fontlibrary.org, but on other websites, sometimes you have to pay to get access to a font. So make sure you keep that in mind. But let's just show you how to grab something from fontlibrary.org. Going to go check out a handwriting font, click on it over here. Let's choose this one that says Alex Brush. So I click on that one. Here I see the, uh, the font, what it looks like, great. And then it says to use this font, it's very much the same thing we were doing. So I just copy this link, put it in the head of my HTML file. So let's get rid of the last one, paste that in there, save it. And then over on the CSS, I can see what I have to use. So we'll just copy and paste that. And it's showing right now for an example paragraph. So we'll come back up here and paste that whole thing in there. So now I'm just calling Alex, Alex Brush Regular, save that, and let's come back up here and refresh this page. And we can see now I'm using that Alex Brush font. All right, hopefully you realize this is actually a pretty simple process, just linking to the head of your HTML document and then using the information in your CSS to basically use now any font you want. It doesn't have to actually be included on Windows or Macs. You'll be loading it directly from this website, Google Font, or fontlibrary.org. All right, that's all I wanted to talk about for this lecture. If you have any questions, feel free to post them to the Q&A forums. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you at the next lecture.